Now, are we ready? Huh? One minute. Thirty seconds. They ready? Okay, there is a gentleman of the press. We have a statement today, which is on uh, the finance bill 2023. <clears throat> Last week, Azimio La Moja One Kenya Coalition raised concerns about the finance bill 2023 which was published on Friday, 28th of April, and tabled in Parliament on the 4th of May, 2023. We said the bill prepared by the Kenya Kwanza regime is a punishment that the Kenyans cannot and should not entertain. The bill proposes amendments to various tax statutes, including Income Tax Act, Value Added Tax, Tax Procedures Act, and the Miscellaneous Fees and Levies Act, among other laws. We raise the concern that a number of proposed tax measures will have significant negative impact on taxpayers. These include introduction of 16% VAT on petroleum products, revision of the rate of tax applicable to the permanent establishment of a foreign entity and introduction of a tax on repatriated income of the uh, permanent establishment. Requirement to deposit security of 20% of disputed tax before appealing against a judgment to the High Court. Agency taxes such as withholding tax, excess duty of gaming and betting, and withholding VAT to be remitted to the Commissioner real time in 24 hours or three days. Introduction of withholding tax on payments made in respect of digital content uh, monetize, monetization. Turnover tax bans and rates are proposed to be revised. Introduction of digital asset tax upon digital asset transfer or exchange value. Increase of marginal tax rate applicable to employees from 30% to 35 percent. Introduction of 3 percent employee and employer contributions to the National Housing Development Fund. At the time of our statement last week, we took some comfort in the fact that the bill was being subjected to public participation and there was a possibility that the reservations of Kenyans will be taken into consideration. Since then, however, the Kenya Kwanzaa hubris has kicked in. The top leadership of the Kenya Kwanzaa regime in Parliament and the Executive have pronounced themselves on this matter. They have said that the finance bill will pass as it is. They have said not even a comma shall be removed. On Sunday, Honorable William Ruto said the 3% housing levy to be deducted from the basic salaries is mandatory patriotism. National Treasury Secretary Jigwona Ndungu has said Kenya Kwanzaa is hiking taxes to catch up with the neighbors. 
Kenya Kwanzaa's leadership in parliament has also declared that they will have their way because the government never loses. It is clear the so-called public participation is being invited is a mere charade and a gimmick to give Kenyans false hope before they are hit with a tsunami of taxes beginning July. As Ruto was speaking on Sunday, the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority had just raised the retail fuel prices by Kenya shilling 3.4 for the super petrol, shilling 6.4 for diesel, and 15.19 for kerosene. The Kenya shilling itself also continued with this free fall against other major currencies. The rise in the price of fuel and the continuing fall of the shilling means the cost of everything goes up again. Kenyans will recall that early on we had warned that despite all state propaganda trying to ease the supply shortage of maize and lower its costs through duty-free imports would not work and that prices would not come down. To ensure the sub subsidy is passed on to consumers, the government would have to agree with the traders on a formula on various margins and costs. So the negotiations have failed as was expected. Further, it's, if importation is to lower the market price of maize, the volume of imported maize would have to be massive. Reports indicate that not many importers took the offer. The net effect is that the price of unga has not come down. Instead, they are set to rise again. Because Kenya Kwanzaa essentially sees Kenyans as its beast of burden, even this darkening scenario has not been able to persuade the regime to seek middle ground on the finance bill. We restate that for Azimio, this bill remains a big no and no. There's, there is unanimity, unanimity over his rejection. It is our, it's our position that this bill does not qualify as a just tax system. Yes, the country is ripe for tax reform, but this is not one of them. This proposal does not lead to distribution of income. It does not combat poverty. Instead, it seeks to manufacture and distribute poverty. This proposal does not spur economic growth nor generate wealth so that every family in this country can have opportunities. It traces and kills those opportunities. As the bill attracts the poor, it dismantles the middle class too. The Finance Bill 2023 unfairly punishes a diminishing middle class that is already suffering severe blows and can least afford to pay more taxes. The most tangible result of this bill will be the incorporation of more Kenyans into the ranks of the poor. Consequently, we state as follows. One, we continue to demand a major surgery of the finance bill in the interest of the suffering people of Kenya. Two, instead of merely levying more taxes on Kenyans, Kenya Kwanzaa must address the economy's many structural shortcomings, 
For instance, there's a reason why the Kenya Revenue Authority is unable to meet its revenue targets. Kenya Kwanzaa must figure out and address the problem. Three, the cash flow problem in the country is due in part to the weakening of the Kenya, Kenyan currency. The weakness is not just vis-a-vis -vis the U.S. dollar. Our currency fell significantly against the Tanzanian shilling by nearly 10 percent since last September. This suggests that domestic factors are causing part of the decline of the Kenyan shilling. Kenya Kwanzaa must get to the bottom of this problem and stabilize the shilling. Four, Kenya Kwanzaa must strengthen and not undermine critical institutions such as those tasked with fighting corruption, collecting revenue, and, investi and investigating and prosecuting crimes as it is presently doing. Five, Kenya Kwanzaa must incorporate all productive citizens into its nation building projects. Currently, the regime has alienated a huge section of the population who sees themselves as, as outsiders and strangers in their own country. Six, Kenya Kwanzaa must rationalize public expenditure. It must live within its means instead of spending money it does not have on programs and projects in the, the country does not need. Seven, Kenya Kwanzaa must address the public concern that even as taxes rise on, the, on everything and for everyone, there is no clear plan to spend new tax revenues on welfare programs for the poor. Instead, those taxes will only stock inflation and hurt the purchasing power of the poor families. Eight, we appeal to all Kenyans to participate actively in the process of validation and express themselves loudly and clearly that they cannot take any more burden. We equally encourage our people to lobby our elected leaders to stand with the people on this matter. Punda Imichoka. Nine, finally, we make it clear that if this bill is railroaded through Parliament, Kenya Kwanzaa must prepare that we will have no option but to mobilize citizens around the country to fight for themselves. We will have no option but to mobilize all the social sectors and take all the necessary political actions to stop this blow and burden. Punda Imechoka. Thank you. Ati wiki jana sisi kama azimio la umoja one Kenya tuliongea juu hii mswada ya ushuru ambayo imechapisha na serikali ambayo sasa iko kwenye lengo la kiwango uh, uh, kiwango ya kuzungumzia na wananchi tulisema hii mswada ita umia itaumiza wa Kenya wengi zaidi manake wakati huu uchumi ya Kenya inaugua wengi wa Kenya wamefukarishwa na hali ya uchumi iliyoko wengi wa Kenya wamekosa kazi 
na hata na biashara ya katika taifa letu wako na shida mingi zaidi bidhaa ambayo wanaitafuta yani raw materials kutoka nje bei yao iko iko juu hali ya ushuru wakati huu tayari iko juu zaidi kwa fanya biashara kwa hiyo tumesema kupandisha ushuru wakati huu ni kuongeza mzigo kwa wakenya wengi zaidi tumesema wakenya hawawezi kuvumilia tena mzigo zaidi sasa tukahimiza serikali if tuchukue hatua tofauti kuna njia mingi ya kuwa paka paka kama imekuwa paka mitu inakula vifaranga inaweza kuuliwa unaweza kuchukua kamba uweke kwa shingo unaweza kuweka kisu unaweza kuchukua paka vile vile ukapiga na nyundo vile vile unaweza kuchukua paka ukaweka kwa gunia ukaweka jiwe peleka mtoni uzamishe huko kwa hivyo tumemwambia serikali watafute mbinu ya kuimarisha mapato ya serikali tofauti na kupandisha ushuru na zinajua inawezekana tulipengia kwenye serikali ya kwanza tukiwa na rais Mwai Kibaki tulitafuta mbinu hali ya uchumi ilikuwa mbaya zaidi kuliko wakati huu lakini tuliweza kutoa serikali kwenye shimo pale lioko tukapandisha mapato ushuru ikatoka bilioni eh, 200 ikapanda mpaka bilioni 500 ikaenda mwaka ifuatayo milioni 700 tukaenda bilioni 900 kisha tukafika trilioni tulijua maneno yetu tuliangalia pale uchumi ilikuwa na vuja pesa ilikuwa na sanyo kutoka kwa wafanyabiashara na kwa wananchi lakini hizo pesa ilikuwa inaingia kwa mfuko ya watu wengine. Hata wakati huu inafanyika katika history kali ya Kenya kwanza. Mingi ya ushuru ambayo inasanywa kutoka kwa wananchi haingii kwenye miradi ya serikali. Inajulikana. Kwa hivyo badala ya kuumiza wananchi zaidi tumemwambia watafuta mbinu ya kurekebisha uchumi kama hawezi hawezi hao waondoke sisi tumesema namna hiyo mimi nilimwambia hao juzi na narudia tena hapa leo ya kwamba punda ya Kenya imechoka ukizidisha hii mzigo punda itarudisha itatupa ita, ita, chini na wafanye yale ambao wanataka kufanya sisi kama azimio tumesema Tunataka wa Kenya wakati huu ya kutafuta maoni yao wajitokeze kwa wengi jamaa wakija karibu na waende watoe maoni yao waambie jamaa ya kwamba sisi tumekataa hatukubaliana na nyinyi kwa kupandisha ushuru kila mahali lakini tumewaonya maneno wamesema ati wapende wasipende hiyo lugha ambayo tulikusikia wakati ile nyayo ati hii mswada itapita katika bunge. Kama wakithubutu kufanya hivyo, sisi kama azimio tutakwenda pamoja na Wakenya. Na tutaletwa Wakenya pamoja, tutaombia Wakenya kwamba wachukue mamlaka mikono yao kulingana na fungu la kwanza ya katiba yetu ambayo imesema ati mamlaka katika Jamhuri ya Kenya iko mkononi ya wananchi wa Kenya. Wananchi wa Kenya wanaweza kutumia hiyo mamlaka moja kwa moja au wanaweza kupatia uh, viongozi ambao wamechagua hiyo uwezo ya kuwakilisha. Kwa hayo yote tutafanya. Na usisemeye kwamba hawakuonywa. Tunawaonya na wajukue hii kama ni onyo kali ya mwisho ya azimio. Asanteni. My name is Abuya from Citizen. Um, I have two. 
one on housing, one of the main contentious issues in the finance bill. Um, uh, the chairperson of the budget committee has been quoted saying that uh, Kenyans will be able to get back their money plus interest after seven years. What would be your take on this? Mm -hmm. Two, if you could uh, possibly give us a progress in the bipartisan talks. So what? If you can give us the progress so far uh, in the bipartisan talks that are ongoing. One is um, if I want to invest, I must have a choice where I want to invest. I should not be forced to invest in this venture or this other venture. Uh, and if you're telling me that it is an investment, then you must tell me what kind of interest I'm going to get out of it. So that I can make up my mind whether I want to take my money to the financial market or I want to invest my money, put my money as a deposit in the bank to earn an interest. Uh, but there must be a choice. There must be consultations. Kenyans have not been properly consulted before these measures are, are being introduced. And they're now being introduced and they're being told, irrespective of what you say, these things are going to pass. In other words, the kind of consultation they're talking about is, is, is useless. It's fruitless. Um, the second question you asked is... Uh, Yes, yeah, by partisan talks, um, we've we received a progress report from our team, and they're saying that uh, they've made some progress. Uh, they're going to continue uh, next week. There are issues which are very critical, which we gave a deadline of 30 days. That those within 30 days, you must have a solution. This includes the cost of living. The cost of essential commodities like unga, oil, cooking oil, the price of electricity, school fees, and so on. Secondly, the issue of server, the forensic audit of the server, there must be a, a, a solution to it within these remaining days. Um, then the other one is a, a guarantee and assurance that there will be no interference with all Azimio-affiliated political parties. And uh, you said that, for example, they must not continue to interfere with the Jubilee political party. Uh, they must give us an undertaking that they will not interfere, for example, the Jubilee's uh, general as assembly or uh, convention is scheduled to take place on, t on, on Monday next week, the 22nd. These are some of the issues that we have, we, 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 have, we, have, we have raised, okay? All right, uh, my name is Emmanuel Toff from KTN News. Uh, I have two questions. One, the president yesterday cracked the whip at Camp Sa. Huh? I'm here, Baba <laughs> Nikoap. I'm here. I'm Nachunga camera. So, um, yesterday the president cracked the whip at uh, Camp Sa, firing huh? the PS and uh, some members at Camp Sa. Do you think, uh, what is your take on that? KEMSA, uh, hmm. Kenya Medical Supplies Authority. What's your comment on that? Is the government committed to fighting corruption? Number two, uh, on Sunday and Saturday, we saw you with the president at in Nyandarwa, in Kasarani, and in Nyayo. You had a busy weekend with the president. Does it affect your uh, watchdog, watchdog role as uh, oversighting the government? And are you planning anything? The first question is uh, The first well, question is on uh, KEMSA. KEMSA. Now, KEMSA, KEMSA issue, you know, these are some, all these issues we talked about, issues of corruption. Uh, and um, the, 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 the government uh, is actually reacting. They are reacting to a very major issue. I don't think that this is the, the only scandal that they have. Uh, in, in, in Kemsa. I think within a short period of time, you're going to be seeing hemorrhage uh, in this government. But then, you see, you have a, a government should be run as a government. You have ministers who are, are charged with these responsibilities. Why are we not seeing ministers 
where the president is the one coming up with the key policy issues and respective ministries. The other day, the president was talking about student loans with the permanent secretary and there was no minister, and that is in the state house. A major uh, uh, policy statement on education should come from Minister of Education in his ministry. If there's a scandal in Kempsa, there should be Minister for Health, Minister for Health, or even a, a, a permanent secretary for health, health medical services. This other one here is just PS for, uh, uh, for public health. So uh, we, we, it raises more questions than it, it answers what the so-called surgery in the ministry. Okay. Um, the other one is uh, the, we, we, were, we were in Nyandarwa. We went there, Jamini village, for the funeral of uh, Hayati Field Marshal um, uh, Mukami Kimathi. And we, just, we met there with, with the, Mr. Ruto and uh, his deputy and his. Uh, uh, ministers and uh, of course we shook hands there it was a chance meeting we did not plan to meet there but they said it was a state funeral uh, and, and we said we must go there had been uh, some threats issued by some supporters of Kenya Kwanza but we said no we will go because of our relationship with uh, the diseased uh, as, as, as it turned out. Now they said it was a state funeral. There was, the flags were not flown at half mast. Neither was she given a 21 guns, uh, gun send off as is required, uh, which was very unfortunate indeed. But from there, I had been invited to Kipchoge Keino Athletics uh, Tournament, um, which was taking place at uh, Kasarani. Um, and Mr. Ruto also uh, was coming there. We didn't know that he was coming. He didn't also know that I was going. We just met there uh, as a chance at, at Kasarani. And we watched the, 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 the tournament together. We did not invite each other. The, the following day, there was Mashameji Derby at the Giant Stadium. And I was going there because I'm the patron of Gorma here. Kogalo. And was, as we were coming around Madaraka Estate, there was a, a traffic jam. Then I asked, why is the jam today on a Sunday? I told, oh, you know, the, the, the roads have been closed because the president is coming to, going to the stadium. That's when I knew that Mr. Ruto was going to, to the stadium. And we met there again in the stadium. And um, we watched the match together. In the halftime, we went down to the, the launch, there's only one launch. We could, and then we met there, and the pictures were taken. But we did not talk anything other than football. <laughs> and there was no handshake. And I want to say this for empty time. Mr. Gachagua, understand, we do not want any handshake with the Kenya Kwanzaa. You have not asked for it, we don't want it. And we will not go for it. I think that's enough. Thank you very much. Thank you.